Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to this new edition of Mind Podcast. We are back with our second part of our election podcast. And yes, this time all four of our panelists are here welcoming. Um, I should do a, maybe I should have done a WWE style intro, but since since I didn't do it and already started, we'll do a regular intro. But I'll I'll go with um, welcoming our our partner in crime who wasn't there the last time, Kishore Narayan, joining us from Bangalore, freshly having ha- having had his dosa and filter coffee on Sunday morning and depriving us of some great South Indian food. Hi, Kishore, co-host, podcast. Caster and writer for Mind Makers. Thank you. Uh, great words. Uh, and uh, thank you. Good to be here as always. Uh, uh, till you don't give me my filter coffee, man, Kishore. I'm not going to spare you, man. <laughs> so, on the way, Adit. On the yes, way. Otherwise, I'll complain to Mr. DK Shiv Kumar about the, the, <laughs> the, the intolerance that you are doing. <laughs> uh, Karnataka Cha Raja Abhita DK Shiv Kumar. Hai. <laughs> right? Totally. So, totally. No denying uh, that. Absolutely. Uh, but what happens in Karnataka is what we are going to discuss here. We're going to talk about South and a little bit of the East States, but then welcoming back from our first, uh, the first podcast are our uh, two friends, uh, columnist for Mindmakers, uh, Mohal and podcaster who does a podcast with Kishore as well, and Rohit, uh, analyst, political columnist, and he's doing some fabulous analysis as well. So Mohal and Rohit, welcome. Thanks, Adit. Thank welcome you. to be back. Okay, so a uh, lot has happened since we last recorded. Uh, the elections have been announced. Uh, the candidates have not been announced. So as I was joking, uh, the candidates are still pending. Um, the fa- the phases are announced, but the result is known to people, it seems like, because it's a very... Th- the whole debate is how much will the BJP get? And here we are about to dissect mm. is the most crucial region for them this year because Congress has gained the most in the southern part of India or the, um, the India Alliance had gained the most in the southern part of India. And Congress actually gained power in Karnataka and Telangana since the last election. So having said that and given... And with two strong state leaders. So you had um, uh, the Reddys coming back to the Congress in Telangana big time and DK Shivkumar and Siddharamaya coming back to power in Karnataka. So having said that, but BJP still has the most amount of Lok Sabha MPs from the South and an, a very ascendant Mr. Rannamala in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so that's why we are going to discuss the states of the South. We are also going to discuss Odisha, which is now suddenly back in play because the BJP BJD alliance did not happen. But before I get uh, to Kishore's perspective on Karnataka, um, just a few things. The elections will start on the 19th April and they'll go on seven phases till 1st of June and the counting is 4th of June. And hopefully once counting day is done, the four of us will come back and uh, analyze what happened, Kon Jita, Kon Hara and everything. Um, but before that, there is a couple more preview podcasts remaining. So I don't want to jump the gun. So Kishore, the floor is yours. If you want to talk, let's start with your home state of Karnataka because that's where the most fun is happening right now is what, what I've been hearing. So a brief preview and what do you think is happening? Okay. Uh, 2019, uh, Lok Sabha was a phenomenal uh, year for uh, BJP in Lok Sabha uh, in Karnataka. Uh, out of 28, BJP had 125. JTS won only one. Uh, DK Suresh, younger brother of DK Shukumar, won the only seat for Congress. And then there was one independent who won with BJP support. So you had a, uh, a very unusual situation of 25-1-1-1 in a state of 28 seats. Now this time around, obviously, BJP had already maxed out, so it, it may be difficult for BJP to repeat that performance, point number one. Point number two, BJP is now in alliance with JDS. JDS had got a, uh, a beating in the uh, assembly election last year, wherein the Muslim votes had uh, deserted them. JDS in all their wisdom now thinks that the Muslim votes are not coming back and now might be the right time for them to have a realignment. So uh, about about five, six months ago, they have already stitched up a coalition or an alliance with BJP. So now these two are fighting together as the NDA parties. And obviously Congress is the only party as part of the NDA alliance in the state. So uh, just to just to add uh, some context to what you're saying, Kishore. So Karnataka, you and we have talked about this when we have did the state election, but it's divided into your three parts. And, uh, you know, your your Kalyana Karnataka, your Kittur Karnataka and, the you know, your old Mysore and region. Now, here is the Vokaliga belt is where the JDS has some um, 
votes, so to speak. So here, number 16 yeah. is Hassan. Number 20 is yeah. Mandia. Now, the interesting thing about Mandia is Sumalata, the widow of Ambarish, had won the seat as an independent with BJP's unofficial support. And now Approved. that seat has been allotted to the GDS again. GDS again. And this is Bangalore Rural, which is, you know, DK, DK Suresh is the MP and he's most likely going to retain that seat, even though there but is that, some it, sort of um, vocal Liga belt here. But I think DK Suresh will retain that seat. He himself is a vocal Liga and uh, he okay. himself is a strong uh, leader. So oh, that yeah. way, I think, uh, yeah, and uh, Mandia 20, uh, the number 20 that you see there, that is also a part of uh, JDS bastion for a long time. Correct. So uh, yeah. what you see here is a direct uh, fight for the Okaliga vote uh, this mm -hmm. time around as well. And they have also been given number 19 to Makaru, which is uh, the BJP had narrowly won last time. BJP by 13,000. Uh, against, uh, against Deve Gauda. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, against Devi Gauda himself. I'm sorry, BJP has Tumkur again. Uh, I forget which other seat they have given. So they've given Hassan. Uh, they've given they've given Hassan, they've given Mandia, and they've given Kolar. 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 So Kolar is an interesting seat because Kolar used to be a Congress seat throughout, as exactly. you can see, since independence. And then yes. BJP Only last last time was a surprise victory. Yeah. And this time around, uh, uh I think uh, BJP has given it away to the JDS. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there is confusion. Uh, we don't know whether uh, BJP will field its candidate on JDS symbol or will it be JDS candidate itself. That is something we still don't know about. Yeah, uh, number twenty, uh, number twenty-eight, the 20. corner seat. Correct. Yeah, the corner seat. And uh, the reason why I say that is the Bangalore rural, the one that we talked about, where DK Suresh is contesting. There, you have uh, uh, the son-in-law of uh, uh, Gowda who himself, Dr. C. N. Manjunath, who himself was very, very well known in the state as, mm -hmm. as a cardiac uh, surgeon, cardiac uh, uh, cardiologist, uh, who who was at the head of uh, Jayadeva Cardiac Institute, uh, a well-renowned uh, uh, hospital for That's cardiology. Uh, he retired from government, government service not too long ago, and now he joined BJP and is now fighting on the BJP assembly. So uh, you can argue telling that there is one JDS person uh, fighting on a BJP ticket and therefore uh, a BJP person might fight on a JDS ticket. Uh, that is something we still don't have complete clarity on. But in any case, three seats have been given to the JDS. Interesting. So um, let me get Mohan and Rohit's initial thoughts and then we'll go to seat by seat analysis and who, which, who is in front there. So Rohit and Mohan, what are you seeing in Karnataka, your initial thoughts? What is interesting is BJP still has not declared uh, the nominees on about seven seats. Um, neither has Congress. Congress has about four seats that they have not done. Uh, one of the seats that's interesting is Chikbalpur, which is the uh, which used to be the seat of Virappa Moili and neither BJP nor Congress has uh, declared. So what, what are your thoughts about Karnataka so far? So one thing that I can definitely say is that uh, the <laughs> BSY factor just doesn't refuse to go away for the BJP. Even with the announcement of the candidates, there has been so much news about uh, and Kishore Ji would probably you know, also uh, address this in more detail. The amount of infighting that has been reported from the unit with uh, because of the B because of BSC and his son and the kind of ticket choices. For instance, somebody like uh, Ishwarappa has been so upset about uh, the ticket uh, distribution so far. And uh, pe you know, people he wanted not necessarily getting tickets. So factionalism seems to continue. And uh, while the BJP may pull it, away, pull it off, my biggest worry is that this has harmed the state unit in a way that they would not have imagined. Uh, in the uh, sad run because of infighting continues from the assembly elections which cost them very dearly uh, when it happened the last time around. Um, it's interesting though, the way the JDS right now has been uh, in alliance with the BJP, it's almost as if the JDS seems to be going in towards an eventual merger with the BJP, the way things are moving right now. And uh, they, I think uh, as Kishoji said that they have, I think they've made the right realization. And I said this again and again, like now I'm going to sound like a broken record. Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Juro Yatra was only about certain votes in certain states and that has really had an impact all small parties who suffered it or are going to suffer it have realized so either they want to ally with the congress or they want to ally with the bjp 
See, in uh, an, an analogy of that can be seen in Uttar Pradesh where Akhilesh Pyada was desperate to ally with the Congress. Right? And because they've seen what happened to JDS in the South. After all, they're all Janta Parivar, right? All of them are old Janta Parivar. So they know... Many, those... They had merged together also, na? Yeah. So they had... <laughs> They, that they, that don't know where. <laughs> people forget and I, I kept saying that I cannot wait for Kamal Murarka to uh, campaign uh, because he was also there as a part of old okay. Samajwati Janta Party of Chandrasekhar. I was like, I cannot wait for Dev Gowda to thunder with uh, Nidish Kumar in Patna Sahib and Kamal Murarka to thunder in Bangalore North uh, exactly. uh, for them. So, I mean, this, this is how stupid it was. I mean, it's absolutely. But yeah, I mean, essentially, the clear thing that's coming up is if the third front is not aligned with either of the two parties, it is going to suffer a big collapse. I think that is a big takeaway that one can clearly see coming out in this election. Correct. And there is a serious implosion happening in the third front. Maybe absolutely. it's for the good, maybe it's for the bad. I am not sure whether we can say it in either direction, but that's definitely the trend we can see right now. So we are going towards a more presidential form of system, but then obviously we don't have a challenger. It's Mr. Modi and then Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who's the reluctant <laughs> uh, thing. So who knows? But uh, Mohal, what are your thoughts about Karnataka? And then I'll go with to Kishore for region by region breakdown. Yeah, I mean, I would speak more on the alliance, the BJP and the JDS alliance. So this also talks like i mean jds as you say like is facing an existential crisis where they have not been in uh, power in the state for quite some time so they think that allying with bjp is their way out uh, but like e even like for bjp i mean many places like there have been feelers made by smaller parties to bjp but bjp being quite strong hasn't taken them on now interestingly here because of the poor performance or the debacle in the state elections I think the maybe the National High Command thought it prudent to take JDS along and uh, stitch an alliance so that whatever uh, negative headwinds, I mean, mostly it is going to be a vote for Prime Minister Modi in his name, but to overcome those uh, regional or local headwinds, they have decided to take on uh, a quite a significant uh, uh, ally like in JDS on board, which I think has like 10-15% vote share. So it is just to like solidify. I think we have seen this in many other states, be it like a, a Bihar or a Uttar Pradesh, where they've taken on several smaller allies because they want to secure their flanks. And obviously they have that stated goal of like uh, 400 for the uh, NDA. Granted, it might be a far-fetched goal. But they just want to make sure that they leave nothing to chance and don't have a repeat of like a 2004 shock scenario. 2004 incidentally also happened to be the last time India and US were uh, having elections together. So it's a, 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 it's a very interesting thing that you bring up <laughs> and BJP is terrified about that. But Rohit, a quick point and then I'll go to Kishore. Well, yes. I think Kishoreji would also probably elaborate more on that going forward. Um, you know, BJP was probably trying to get in more Vokaliga votes in their own kitty. That is why a lot of their even assembly campaign back in the last assembly elections was focused in South Karnataka with big bank shows, right? Uh, assuming that the Lingayat vote would definitely be with the BJP, though it turned out that they barely gained any Vokaliga votes and lost out on the Lingayat vote itself. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> you do see that happening. And I would say that uh, that is probably one of the reasons why JDS, which is still seen as a vocal Liga party by many, right? The Congress has always had a very strong vocal Liga support base around it. You know, Shiva Kumar, DK Suresh, both are from the same community, from that community. The uh, Gaudas have uh, managed to, you know, been pulling, was seen as that party within the southern uh, part of Karnataka. So maybe that is something that also the BJP has, that has driven the BJP rather to come and you know, eventually agree to this alliance because despite their efforts, they had SM Krishna from the same community who was also the former chief minister of Karnataka, who also unfortunately has the great, uh, you know, the graceful, uh, how to say, who had that great uh, achievement of uh, reading out the Portuguese finance foreign minister's speech in the mm. UN General Assembly for five minutes by mistake. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was not working out for them. So clearly, they've been uh, desperate to get this a chunk of the Vukaliga votes for a while now. Maybe this this was also another driver for them that they see 
because the bjp's election strategy has always been about the grand spectrum of alliance no, the, the the scary part in that strategy was that they risked losing a lot of lingayat votes exactly that, that, exactly. that you get the voka league votes but when you have a benchmark and a and a strong base right it's like the same thing in gujarat where where bjp tried to get the thakur votes but they were afraid that they might lose the patel vote and without the patel vote there is no bjp in gujarat likewise there is without the lingayat vote there is no bjp in karnataka so, so they yeah, have the to vote basically they saw an erosion yes. of the electoral vote and they need to be really careful about it i mean that's so how it's... i think there are two keys and i'm come to kishore now there are two keys for any bjp a solid upper caste base and a strong obc primary obc vote if you add that and get up to 30% then bjp becomes unstoppable in that state right so in up you have the brahmin vote the little bit of the kshatriya thakur the thakur vote and then your strong uh, obc the non dalit obc and now they have made inroads in dalit votes as well but this is a uh, uh, pre 2014 but we digress so kishor karnataka seat by seat what do you think uh, first of all what seats do you think Congress has a chance in, or BJP has facing a tough contest because there are certain seats we know, like Bengaluru South or Bengaluru North or Hubli Dharwad. Sent well, Pralad Joshi is from. They are going to win that in a landslide. Uh, yes. So uh, good points made by uh, Rohit and Mohan. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the state unit li- uh, leaves a lot to be uh, uh, desired. They are not up to the mark. Uh, they are not the best in the in the in the country. uh even last time uh, they were unable to uh, retain that vote share across the across the state so uh, this time around they are struggling now one one more reason for all this is all the mlas who had lost last time the bjp mlas they were aspirants for mp tickets this time because they can't stay away from power for a long time so obviously you had more aspirants uh, along with the sitting mps who wanted to be renominated so that was one issue and then of course you had the bsy factor where he was adamant that the sun becomes the uh, party uh, unit uh, state state unit president obviously the uh, the elder son is already an mp from shimoga so uh, that way uh, everybody thought that uh, this time around yadurappa and her son will determine who will get the tickets now this is a marked contrast to last time when there was a uh, some amount of uh, 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 determination by bl santosh of who gets the ticket so now i think the bl santosh uh, camp or gang or whatever you want to call has been sidelined completely bsy gang is back in the limelight they have taken over uh, the state and therefore you see that kind that very visible in the way tickets have been distributed now again as you said five uh, seats have still not been uh, four or five have still not been declared by bjp three have not been declared by jds simply because it has not been officially announced yet and therefore jds are still waiting uh, in any case uh, that is the picture in terms of uh, the bjp state unit uh, a lack of ethical attitude lack of ethical approach in terms of how they go about uh, uh, talking uh, being in touch with the people now also the other thing is uh, congress Uh, uh having romped to majority 136 out of uh, 234 is in a very very comfortable position in the state and uh, dk shukmar and uh, sidramaya for various reasons obviously want more number of congress mps from karnataka sidramaya wants to stay in power ensuring that there is no rebellion if he uh, cannot achieve a good number of seats dk shukmar wants to win and thereby showcase that as one more Uh, feather in his cap, so that way there will be that tiff between those two uh, leaders in Congress. Now, in addition, you also have a situation where uh, many Congress ministers had been asked to go and fight the MP elections. They flatly refused simply because they are already enjoying power. There is no reason why they should uh, uh, again go fight. But then they said, "Okay, if you want Congress to win here." give the ticket to my son my daughter my daughter in law my uh, son in law and we will ensure that congress wins in our constituencies uh, best case examples uh, malika jun karke uh, deciding not to contest but her son in law is now the declared uh, contestant ramalinga reddy major minister seven time eight time mla uh, did not want to contest his daughter saumya reddy is the contestant from bengaluru south 
and i mean the entire state congress candidate list is like that uh, chikpalapura yeah, where you mentioned uh, hmm. where you where you mentioned uh, that virapamaili used to win earlier uh, racharamaya uh, youth congress uh, uh, head uh, son of an mlc uh, is now uh, being talked about as getting the ticket so that way almost every seat that you see in uh, karnataka congress aspirants are related to the minister or uh, son of an mla yeah. So in Davangere, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So I was just going to add quickly in Davangere, where Congress won five or of the six MLAs or six out of seven MLAs, basically in the last election, uh, where GM Siddeshwara was there, and now BJP gave it to Gayatri Siddeshwara. There they gave it the seat to Prabha Malikarjun, who you know, who's a MLA as well, and is is the son of uh, uh, is I'm sorry, I'm sorry, is the wife of SS Malikarjun, who is the hmm. you know current Ministry of Mines and Geology in the government of Karnataka. Now I saw a Congress worker. on twitter expressed anger because he uh, was an aspirant for the seat uh, to Correct. some extent i think they just be surya saying what are you doing in congress or something you need to come because i know how because, I, i saw that conversation right? yeah so so uh, what do you make of things like that so that's very interesting so the, has congress actually uh, uh, in its perpetual style hit a self goal in karnataka where that they had a chance in five or six seats now they're down to again the two or three bastions not more than that i think it can be a factor but congress begins with uh, the uh, uh, the entire gamut of uh, muslim votes what would have what would have possibly gone to jds will not go to jds anymore so congress already starts with a larger uh, cushion to begin with and uh, obviously the bhagya scheme the guarantee uh, schemes have had an impact there is no denying that no matter which way you want to uh, uh, turn it around i think i think the women uh, are seeming to be more in favor of uh, voting for congress rather than the men and therefore i think uh, congress stands a better chance than what we saw in 2019 and of course uh, in most of the in most of the parliamentary constituencies five out of eight or six out of eight uh, are already ruled by uh, congress mla so i think I that way they have a good base to begin with yeah i have to ask you a question let's look at bangalore central right that's a very interesting one or bengaluru central um mm-hmm. bengaluru central out of the eight mlas congress has five mlas um including dinesh gundura from gandhinagar and stuff they've always had more mlas here there is a significant muslim vote here for the yeah. last three elections congress has continuously nominated rizwan arshad or someone you know i think this was ja- jafar sikhe jafar sharif sold seat right um, yes yes prior now, to delimitation prior to this yes so since the delimitation congress has never won it yet they keep nominating a muslim face right uh, and this yes and the reason for that they nominated was... it again right so if they keep nominating a muslim face are they never going to win this seat the reason for congress to do that is they think that uh, if there is any seat in the state where, where minority quota wise there has to be a muslim candidate it is bengaluru central so i think that is the logic that they keep applying you are right uh, it has not worked for them and uh, the only seat where the only constituency where uh, bjp gets some a, a huge lead and which uh, congress uh, finds difficult to uh, negate is bomanahalli where bjp gets a huge lead that is where the it belt is and therefore i think uh, uh, there is also that uh, amount of reverse polarization where hindus may not seem to uh, like to vote for uh, the muslim candidate of congress so i think all those are the factors that keep working p c mohan the sitting mp two time uh, bjp sitting mp himself was not very very popular i tweeted about it just a couple of days ago and and this time around as well he might he might as well win with uh, Uh, very little difficulty so i think i think you are right uh, uh, seat selection for uh, congress in terms of uh, what candidates they choose seems to be uh, an achilles heel for them for a long long time adit absolutely so the having said that um, closing remarks and i'm then i'm going to go to rohit and mohal for their initial thoughts on tamil nadu the uh, the big prize this time because finally after years it seems tamil nadu is in play again um, and it's not one way or the other we might see a 50 50 split uh, what do you what, what do you think seat predictions wise do you think bjp can comfortably cross 20 seats after 28 again uh, B- bjp is contesting only 25 but if you are asking in terms 
Yeah, I, I think twenty. NDA, years, uh, let's let's uh, say NDA, NDA, uh, twenty seats. You think NDA is easy to? Twenty uh, would mean Congress to win eight out of twenty-eight, yeah. which is definitely not going to happen. Uh, Congress yes. may be limited to uh, its best performance can be five, uh, five or six, not more than that. So therefore, I think BJP can easily be uh, the lowest that B uh, NDA can be will be twenty-two, twenty-three. And uh, Modi has not yet even campaigned. Uh, uh, Karnataka votes in the second and the third phase overall nationally. So I think uh, a lot of the election uh, entertainment happens much earlier out here in the south, especially in Karnataka. So uh, uh, Modi coming over to the south states uh, and also having a few rallies here will obviously have that add-on effect. But I think uh, the mini rebellion that uh, Rohit was pointing out, I think that mm -hmm. has had a uh, uh, a sore effect on BJP's uh, preparation, so to speak. Uh, the way the way BJP units nationally and in the state can handle it will will determine the final outcome. But I think 22, 23 should not be that difficult. Uh, as so what I if, feel. if um, uh, on a lighter note, Kishore, if I ask you, there are two options before you: BJP wins 25 out of 28, or BJP wins 23 and RCB wins the IPL. What would you take? RCB wins the IPL. We have already won. <laughs> we have already won. You keep forgetting that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I had to. I, since the IPL has started, I had to start uh, have a little bit of that. Adit, it's not trolling. Mat karo. He will decide for the next podcast if you troll him so much. I haven't told him anything here. I have told him so much. Troll uh, all trolling of RCB, uh, blame uh, my friend Kushal Mehra for it. I have told on the record this time I said RCB has some of the best fans in the IPL. And uh, Kushal Mehra joking. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I said that on record. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and which I believe it. I will believe. I will, I will troll RCB, but some of the best fans uh, at IPL. But, you know, speaking of IPL, let's talk about Indian Political League. So, uh, Rohit, you want to start with Tamil Nadu first and then I'm going to Mohal. Tamil Nadu is turning out to be a fascinating contest, not for any other party, but for the BJP alone. And I am... It's becoming a very interesting, and I mean, the amount of effort that the BJP is putting. See, you have to realize a couple of things. Even a mainstream like channel within Tamil media, like PT, Pute Talai, is giving the BJP something like a 15-16% vote share. That has never been reported to date. Okay. So what it means, and BJP, mind you, will not get it across the state. That's the and, and on its own, not with the alliance with Anna DMK. Because without any alliances, the interesting part is a lot of this is concentrated in pockets right now. Okay. One major pocket being the Kongunadu belt, which is basically the Coimbatore, Krishnagiri, Hosurwala region, which is very close to the Karnataka, which is literally next to Bangalore, though, next door to Bangalore. The other part, of course, is the Kanyakumari region. Uh, Chennai, of course, is, you know, the Chennai belt, uh, thousand lights, etc. You don't see the BJP in contest there. But the interesting part is the BJP has decided to field all its heavyweight candidates so far. The You know, the big players, the big daddies of the Tamil Nadu politics for BJP, all of them have been given tickets. Be it Anna Malay, of course, who's been given a ticket from Coimbatore. And I feel that BJP has a serious chance in Coimbatore this time. Because of the fact that Anna Malay has been fielded. Anna Malay has been undertaking this uh, in... Ian Man Yena Makkal Yatra for a very long time. I mean, it's, he's been on the road for nearly six, seven months. And in the South, if you notice, the Padayatra politics of the South is has always had an impact somehow because mass contact, once the politicians start building it, it really translates into votes. We've seen that in the past with people like Vice Raj Shekhar Reddy doing it, right? And achieving that. And, and, and Anna Malay's template has literally, or even for that matter, his son, Jagan Mohan, doing the same in Andhra. And you see the same template being adopted by Anna Malai in, for the BJP in Tamil Nadu. Clearly, it's having an impact. Uh, interestingly, the allies, alliances that the BJP is making within the state. Now, one of the big players, though it's considered a though I though most people will say it's a marginal player, I would say it's a big player. Uh, the PMK, Patali Makkal Kachi, which is basically considered to be a one-year party. There has been some serious consolidation of the one-year... In one the year. North Tamil Nadu region. Yeah, and that's again... Yeah. So, there has been a serious one-year consolidation happening in the state for at least three or four years right now. Okay, it's not like an out-of-the-blue phenomenon that's taken place. So, 
you know that's where them coming with the bjp so it's considered a 6 to 7% vote right in the state that coming with the bjp 16 plus 6 is about 22 so if it's about a quarter of a vote of the total votes in the state bjp is a serious challenger right now and a third uh, yes. vote in the state absolutely i agree mohal your initial thoughts and before you say uh, uh, a very interesting thing is tamil nadu actually votes in 3 weeks on 19th april so yeah, it wants the entire state votes in one phase and so tamil nadu basically the last date of filing nomination for most of you when you listen to this it will be two days after you listen to the podcast on 27th march so it's it, it's there uh, i know we are not seeing prime minister modi has made a several several trips to tamil nadu but the hawa to so to speak is there so if bjp cannot capitalize in the last week this is their best and the only chance to do so yeah. so mohal your thoughts yeah so i think bjp like tamil nadu has been one of the f- last bastions as they say for uh, i mean out of the significant states to crack for the bjp i mean if we go back to the historical like the best ever they performed was like 7% vote share when they were in alliance with dmk which might sound contradictory given the developments of the last few years but they had 7% vote share and i think they won like four seats back then so i think um i mean it is one of my i you know like some people might troll me like bold predictions for this election is bjp should get a double digit vote share like a 10 plus percent vote share this 2024 now i mean whether that converts to seats it's a it's a massive question i think like not many people know what that would amount to i mean you can see in the neighboring kerala like where a 15% vote share doesn't even translate to like a s- single seat like last time around so we will have to wait and watch i mean one thing is like both amit shah and like prime minister modi has invested a lot of time interestingly one of the stats that i recently heard about was that Tamil Nadu has been like the number 2 or number 3 most visited state by prime minister modi in the last 4 5 uh, last 5 years so that shows that there has been a clear plan by uh, amit shah and modi to reach out to and break into this new greenfield territory to uh, i mean in, because i mean they are saturated in the north so they no, no. want to yeah and there are three interesting components of this alliance because uh, uh, and i'm coming to you kishor next and which is why which is <laughs> this is my most favorite part and i'm going to share my screen and show you guys this um, bjp is fighting with these allies so you have ac shanmugam you have uh, uh, you know the ijk you have the tmmk but here comes the fun part you have the anubhumanni ramadas sr ramadas's party the pmk then gk vasan Uh, again the son of gk mupanar from tamil yeah. manila congress uh, uh, mupanar obviously ttv dinakaran who used to be with jay lalita has there and then you have mr o panir selvam holding the uh, holding the fort of amma himself independent so this is this is the strangest combination where uh, bjp has one side of jay lalita's legacy the other side is with the widow of vijay kant who has passed away as well so this is strangely the first election in the history of tamil nadu without any of the three mavericks jayalalitha karunanidhi or vijaykanth and i'm not saying vijaykanth was as serious a player as them but in the last few years he had become a factor in some vidhan sabha seats and certainly that big jayalalitha uh, win in i think in 2012 or something like that when she came back to power she was uh, you know that was an alliance with vijaykanth um Oh, 2011 i'm sorry uh, coming to you rohit in a second so for, having said that uh, i'm going to highlight four or five seats where bjp actually has a chance because when you if you talk to people these are the one obviously being coimbatore where uh, annamalai himself is standing and bjp has won it where typically bjp's nom- uh, uh, opposite in coimbatore has been the communist party of india pr natarajan this time uh, seems like dmk is fighting it all by himself uh, the yeah. other seat the other seat where they are saying is vellore well there is an outside chance of bjp causing a little bit of uh, thing theni uh, last time theni was a very very narrow contest the ai dmk actually won in theni and this time they have ttv dinakaran standing from theni uh, ramanathapuram again a very interesting thing where they are fighting against the muslim league and um, and last time if you look at the uh, vote they nainar nagendran came within about 1 lakh 20000 votes but an independent got 1.4 lakh votes this time o panir selvam is standing as an independent there and 
um, Kanyakumari, obviously, where Ponar has uh, has already won before. So there are four or five seats where the NDA has a legit chance. There are people who are saying Chennai South also, but Chennai South is a is a tough one. That's a DMK Ghad. So that I I never um, uh, uh, count them out of that. So uh, uh, Rohit, your thoughts on Tamil Nadu? Chennai what South, thoughts? Anglo Central of Chennai. So first of all, BJP <laughs> should not even think about it. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, but having said that, uh, put that aside. Nilgiri uh, seat, we are discounting that. Uh, Murugan, Mr. Murugan actually has a genuine chance. Again, Murugan, North Kansi, yeah. impact and BJP's tribal outreach. You have to realize that one, right? Nilgiri has a significant total population. And Nilgiri is actually won in alliance with DMK in 1998 during Atalji's yeah. first term. Uh, Master Mathan uh, won it in 1998. You know, tribal out the Janjati outreach for the last six and a half years will definitely have an impact in the seat. I can yeah. bet on that, yeah. right? Second, uh, Coimbatore, even Krishnagiri, Krishnagiri is adjacent, is as I said, is a good uh, Kanyakumari, as you pointed out, is another seat where the BJP definitely has a chance. Um, open your album will have a serious chance in Ram Nathapuram. I am 100% sure of that because the way the seat is, you know, uh, how do I say? The, the, uh, the demographics of the seat are such that as an independent open news album will probably be able to pull more votes towards them that, than the BJP candidate would. So let's see. I mean, I am very, I'm, see, I feel the BJP is in a contest for at least six to 10 seats, not winning all of them, but definitely close to being two, number two for sure in the 10 seats. So Kanyakumari, the last time uh, they won it was in 2014. Now Kanyakumari is an interesting seat where there is a, a about a 40% Christian population as well. And what yeah. they earlier said was Jailalitha would actually help out the BJP and put up a Christian face and th 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 that would actually split. So in 2014, that's exactly what happened. Uh, you had uh, uh, H. Vasant Kumar from the Congress, but then AIDMK put up D. John Thankam and he gets one, 17 or 18% of the vote. That goes comes straight from the Congress and BJP sweeps through its 38% vote. DMK has uh, a 12% vote as well. So what they are afraid of in, now in 2019 because bjp and uh, amma were in admk were in alliance congress basically ensured that there was no other face and they won by two and a half lakh votes now this time interestingly the admk of Pan, uh, palani sami has nominated basil and narasat from there so how the splitting will happen, no one knows. But a lot of my friends from tamil nadu and kishore correct me if i'm wrong and give your thoughts on this are saying that Sometimes Palani Sami is actually sold is sold to the DMK. You know, basically that what's that uh, slogan? To spite uh, spite the face, he stabbed him in the is himself in the eye or something like that. I'm forgetting the slogan. But bottom line is he wants to teach the BJP a lesson because they have not taken him along, and so he's giving DMK a walkover and not splitting the votes as it was hoped earlier on the BJP side. Is that true? And how how would you you read Tamil Nadu? Yeah, I will first begin with ADMK. Uh, ADMK, if not now, if they cannot cement their uh, the second uh, position now, then I think they are in serious trouble with uh, BJP uh, over, uh, overtaking them and therefore becoming the principal opposition party. And that is why, as you rightly said, it is it is the opportune moment for Eda Party uh, to actually ensure that BJP does not win anything at all. Also, another reason is that O Panir Shalvam, who had been historically uh, closer to BJP, uh, has has been uh, thrown out of the party, uh, thrown out of ADMK, and now he has joined with uh, NDA, he has become a part of NDA, and therefore that is one more reason for uh, ADMK to ensure that NDA does not win handsomely anywhere in the state. Now, at the same time, there has been danger, and this is something that I want to caution everybody who has high hopes for NDA, is that there can be a position where ADMK might tell, okay, if not, if we cannot win, make sure that NDA also cannot win, which means that the ADMK cadre, uh, trust me, ADMK is a very, very cadre-based party. So the ADMK cadre, one or two days prior to the election, can actually then start campaigning for DMK, either, either uh, uh, visibly or invisibly. Now, if that is the case, then uh, BJP and NDA can still struggle to win uh, as many seats as you people are pointing out. So that is the uh, crux 
of uh, what will happen to the ADMK vote. Uh, one more thing uh, now, uh, the Muslim vote that historically was for ADMK and used to go away to uh, DMK is now back with ADMK simply because they are not uh, working with BJP anymore. So that is also uh, one more factor to consider. Now, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the regions, uh, Rohit, and uh, you mentioned that uh, the Congo Nadu, North uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, then South, extreme South of Kanyakumari, Tirunelveli, Ramanathapuram, all those are the actual uh, uh, bellwether scenes in terms of where the wind is uh, flowing. Uh, I, I totally get that. But at the same time, you also have to understand that uh, uh, almost across the state in all the 39 uh, seats, BJP's vote share will increase. Last time, uh, across the state, it was 5%. So even if they triple it, they'll go to 15 But obviously, like how Rohit pointed out, there will be, there will be constituencies where BJP by itself uh, like uh, Coimbatore, for example, can go all the way up to 35, 38. And that is where things start changing. And uh, just to add to uh, uh, the constituencies that you people mentioned, uh, I think you people also mentioned about South Chennai, but you said uh, uh, thousand lights, but no. Uh, South Chennai has, has more uh, uh, Marwari votes. Uh, all those historically who had uh, immigrate, um, Moved, moved over to uh, Tamil Nadu many years ago. They, until now, were not finding uh, a voice politically. And I think with BJP now coming in, they might feel that we have a chance to ascertain politically, point number one. Point number two, uh, Tamil Nadu Saundar Rajan, the doctor, the governor who resigned and now is the candidate there, she had last time contested against uh, Kanimoli, uh, daughter of Karnanidhi from uh, Tutukuri. Uh, both of them being Nadar, Nadarka. Uh, 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 Tutukuri is uh, the guy for uh, Nadar's uh, caste wife. Now, uh, she has now been asked to fight from South Chennai, uh, hoping to get the non Tamil votes. A. B. The sitting MP, uh, Tamilachi Tangapani, and the, uh, the lady uh, uh, South Chennai MP, she has a lot of anti incumbency simply because she was nowhere to be seen during the uh, the cyclone and the floods in Chennai that we saw last year. So uh, this this she somehow has become uh, has had the talk has become the talking point. And so I think that is something to uh, uh, check. Now the other thing, uh, just uh, one more uh, point, Adit. The yeah. other thing is with regards to Coimbatore. Coimbatore can be the most talked about constituency in the whole country. I have no doubt about it. 2014, it was Varanasi. Uh, what will happen to uh, Modi and how will people from UP accept him? So Varanasi in 2014. Uh, 2019, it was the story of Amethi. How uh, will, will Smriti Irani second time be able to knock off uh, Rahul Gandhi? Third time, I think in 2024, I think it will be the story of Coimbatore. Shingai Ramachandran, the ADMK candidate, is also an engineering graduate. He is also an IAM Ahmedabad uh, uh, degree holder. So I PhD, PhD is the name of the college, uh, the engineering college. So you have uh, PhD students, both Shingai Ramachandran and uh, K. Anamalai. Uh, both of them I am uh, degree holders. So we, ha we suddenly have two educated people fighting it out in and uh, Coimbatore, are it? Absol absolutely. Um, um, no, um, another thing, and I want to add this, and I cannot emphasize this. A lighter enough. note, since he mentioned uh, the Nadar uh, vote base in Tutukuri, uh, it's interesting how caste consolidation takes place in Tamil Nadu. I've seen posters where Sardar Jatta Singh Aluwalia has been shown as an Nadar as well, right? Mm. So, uh, as part of an All India Nadar Association or something. So, I mean, it's really fascinating when they try to. You know, and this also shows how things have changed so much that they're looking at North Indian figures as well and including them in the larger pantheon of great figures. Absolutely. Figuring. No, no, but Rohit, there is a big thing. And um, and I think, I guys, I'm apologizing in advance. We have three more states in the South. So we'll have to leave Odisha for when we do the East. There is way too much things to cover. Otherwise, nahi ho paega. But I have to say this one thing. BJP, for after years and years, has a solid face in the Tamil state of Tamil Nadu. You cannot win Tamil Nadu with Janakrishnamurti or Ella Ganesan as your faces. 
that is what the watch by bjp had now they had their own problems right they had to cede their ground to the dmk dmk was in uh, and alliance at that time and essentially mura soli maran was the pramod mahajan of tamil nadu man how pramod mahajan was doing bjp sena mura soli maran was doing the same thing the father of the anadi maran but no i and, i think bjp and and uh, as much as many people dislike bl santosh for k nmla is actually a bl santosh fight absolutely i agree completely so you know credit where credit is due mr santosh did is uh, uh, and there has come up from you know the cadre and stuff so okay mr oh, is a nice yeah. officer so uh, also fits in with the recent trend of bureaucrats joining the bjp because we'll talk about that in the east now mr shringla is there mr sandhu is going to probably contest from amritsar so fascinating so moving to kerala another state where bjp has um, going to be causing uh, quite a thing and kerala i want to here is my initial take and i'm going to bring mohal here but my take for kerala is bjp if it makes too many inroads and gets to the 20 to 22% mark which a lot of my sources from the ground are saying that bjp is actually hitting the 20 to 22% mark that is resulting in the collapse of the ldf and completely giving all the votes to the udf so that what that is going to do is the upa or the india alliance or something they, because they are fighting it separately udf and ldf are fighting election separately udf is probably going to win 17 or 18 seats out of 20 and all the left votes are going to go to them mohal yeah so i mean i mean as you said the ldf and udf are on kind of like in war of words i mean just i mean like d raja's wife any raja she is the cont- uh, she is contesting from wayanad which is like rahul gandhi seat and there was lot of uh, heartburn the india alliance like about it also Risa, i think just couple of days ago uh, shashi tharoor uh, said it was like quite rich of i mean i'm just paraphrasing it like the, it may be badly that it was quite rich of uh, cpi who was like uh, blaming like why rahul gandhi is doing when they are just putting up a cpi candidate in tiruvanthapuram where he is contesting and he, they will be like breaking you know the anti uh, bjp votes out there so i mean all is not well as you say between the ldf and the udf partners and tell me something this i mean can bjp capitalize on that i mean that's an open question to be uh, answered but yeah the prospects look good where they could maybe pick up a, a one or two seats you know out there my fav- my favorite moment from the kerala campaign this time has been brinda karat was thundering down with a translator and she was talking about <laughs> i th- i think mr k karuna karan's daughter leaving and going joining the bjp and, and i forget what is her name padmaja uh, Ha, but but ha, so she ha. she wrote she spoke a whole paragraph in English and and the translator said Padma Japoi. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, are you done? And he's like, ah, they understood. <laughs> Padma Japoi. <laughs> that, that was my favorite part. And so Brinda Karan unintentionally gives the most funniest uh, uh, moments from Kerala campaigns on this. But what is interesting this time is N.K. Premachandran, who was with uh, who was with the RSP, I think earlier, if I'm not mistaken, he's always flipped. I think earlier he's been with the NDA or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, or some other alliance. Now he's fighting with the UPA from Kollam. But the real crucial seats, and BJP has not declared all the things, the real crucial seats are where there's going to be a tri- tri- trifecta contest. And those I can name, and Rohit, you can come in and then after you, Kishore. Uh, Thrissur with Suresh Gopi fighting. Um, uh, Tiruvananthapuram, obviously, the heavyweight fight, Shashi Tharoor versus Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Um, then you have uh, uh, Pat- Patanam Titta, which is an interesting seat where Anil Anthony has been nominated. Now, Patanam Titta last time, uh, where uh, you had the old BJP... Um, uh, uh, K. Surendran, old BJP uh, guy who got about 30% of the vote, 29% of the vote. And... But he's not Christian face. And this has a significant Christian population. And BJP's outreach into the Christian community in Kerala has been quite fascinating. They have given two or three Christian faces tickets as well this time. So how do you view that, uh, uh, Rohit? And do you see there are two seats? I foresee BJP giving a serious fight in three seats at least this time. No, totally in sync on what on the seats that you identified. Uh, one big factor that has happened in recent uh, couple of years, and most people have sort of missed that, 
is the mo- movement of somebody like PC George towards uh, uh, the BJP and joining the BJP. See, PC George is a regional player in one way, right? He had this very small some co- some Congress alphabet, basically as I call them. There are so many Congresses in Kerala, you can't even you know it's an A to Z of Congress in Kerala essentially back in the day. But he's he had an impact in northern Kerala, particularly the hills region. Uh, places like uh, so Patran Theta for that reason becomes a big factor because it's again north of Kerala hill region where plantation uh, owners mo- a majority of whom are Christians I've had a lot of issues with the BJP interestingly since the induction of PC George has been trying to address and you know solve uh, be it rubber, rubber uh, you know rubber latex procurement prices or you know uh, setting up or uh, helping the spice procurement process become smoother so They've been reaching out not just in a cultural or social way. They've been reaching out to the Christian community, even in an economic sense uh, in the state. And that I feel particularly the hills region will have an impact in the sense what we're getting to here is if the BJP will not vote for the Cong- for the, if the Christians don't vote, the, vote for the BJP, they will definitely not vote against the BJP either. At best, they might choose to sit it out this time. That is the kind of uh, thing that is coming on the ground, which is why... But, BJP- all of North Kerala sees that you mentioned. Absolutely. Except, I agree well, completely. As for Tiruvananthapuram, I, uh, by the way, one very interesting thing, Padmaja's induction is seen by the, by many as a big turning point for the BJP. Because, see, for the longest time, Congress was, till the Antony and Chandi phase came in, Congress was seen as a Nair party in the state. Right? So, a heavyweight like Karnakaran's daughter coming in is now consolidating the fact that the BJP is now becoming the party of preference for the Nair community, which is probably the second or third largest community in terms of its vote share in the state. Absolutely. So and fact that has now been developed by the BJP. And the more you talk to Nairs in general across the state, you know that it's... And, and let's not forget that alliance with the Yalavas, with the SNDP right. or the B- BJD as their outfit, the Bharatiya... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, because Velapapali Natesan, his son Tushar Velapapali is again contesting this time as a um, uh, as a as a BJP face. Uh, uh, sorry, NDA face in alliance. So, uh, so Kishore, your take before we move to Telangana, I know we are running short of time, that's why. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, Kerala, I think uh, you people have covered most uh, of the points. Uh, no point in repeating them. Uh, but yes, yeah, totally agree. Tiruvananthapuram, Patanantita, and uh, Trishur are the ones to watch out for. Uh, uh, Suresh Kopi, uh, a former actor, uh, continues to act even now, uh, has been the sole uh, uh, big uh, actor uh, from the Malayalam movie industry who had identified himself with BJP for a long, long time. And despite being shamed, despite being made to be uh, embarrassed, I think he had no qualms about associating himself with uh, BJP. Uh, this time around, he is contesting from uh, Trishur. Trishur is considered to be the cultural capital of Kerala. So again, a significantly important uh, constituency. Uh, uh, Suresh Gopi has been going around telling that you will now get one Malayali uh, central minister and therefore, you have to vote for me. So I think that is an interesting take uh, by Suresh Gopi telling, if you vote for me, I'll definitely become the minister in Modi cabinet. So uh, that is that is one way of telling, guys, if you want some kind of development happening in the state, you got to vote for me. I can bring all the all the central projects. Uh, Tarun and Tupram, you've already spoken. Uh, Shashi Tarur, huge anti-incumbency. Uh, CPI, uh, the LDF vote also. Uh, is not uh, disintegrating in Tiruvananthapuram, so uh, very, very high possibility for Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Uh, mm-hmm. Patan and Tita, you already mentioned the uh, outreach towards the Christians. One more thing about the outreach towards Christians, uh, just like every other community, the Christians too are, are split into multiple churches in Kerala, and there was a huge uh, long-standing dispute between two churches, and uh, neither the uh, the courts within Kerala nor the Supreme Court was able to uh, handle that. And somehow with these, uh, the 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 bishops, the pastors, uh, the priests, they went to uh, the central government, and Modi was able to handle it. And therefore, I think uh, the long-standing dispute was somehow uh, taken care of. All these uh, soft uh, approaches towards the Christians have definitely helped. So the, the Hindus 
and Christians voting together can be a huge uh, plus, not only now, but also into the future. And I'll tell you one more reason why. Uh, the birth rate of Hindus in Kerala has been dipping in terms of the growth and the birth rate of Christians and Muslims are increasing. So today, even now, if you think that uh, Hindus are 40-45% uh, in the state of Kerala, that can quickly change in another two decades and uh, Hindus can be in a minority. And that is why it becomes all the more important for BJP to tap into one more community, that will be the Christian. So if there is an umbrella of Christians and Hindus voting together for the BJP, uh, for whatever reasons they, they find uh, wise, I think it will be a, a good starting point launch pad for BJP within the state. I think that is where uh, BJP's outreach has been added. I think the to the speaking of the demographics, I think it's like the Hindus are around fifty percent and the Christians are, I believe, like around twenty percent. So they have to uh, maximize this seventy percent. Like I mean, as in UP, like they excluding the minority vote, they are like eighty percent, right? So they have to. I mean, if they have aspirations for uh, larger stuff, they have to maximize this seventy percent vote. Absolutely. But also, one more question for all of you: Do you think like uh, this? Uh, I mean, interestingly, like the progeny of two successive INC chief ministers, like Karuna Karan and Anthony, like their kids, like a uh, daughter and son, have joined the BJP. So all might all must not be well within the local uh, Congress party, right? What do you guys think? Yeah, I would talk about that and give me just a couple Please. of minutes. Sorry, uh -huh. we're trying, we trying to cover the entire South, so let's talk as much as we can about uh -huh. it. Entire uh, India, actually, in four episodes. So yes. what's the so, harm in that? Right? That's all in my opinion. That's few episodes in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, so the one, the interesting part is, uh, by the way, the Congress is imploding in the state of Kerala thanks to KC Venu Gopal. He is being seen as that fantastic man who has killed the Congress in the state totally. <laughs> and I mean, the CPM winning, repeating a win in the election. This was the first time ever it happened in Kerala. All it was totally attributed to KC Venu Gopal's mishandling of the state state affairs and the state unit. You know, by the way, everybody has sort of missed this thing that the Indian Union Muslim League in Kerala, which is like a staunch ally of the Congress, instead of going it's going for its two Lok Sabha seats, has asked for a third Lok Sabha seat this time. Okay, that's a big movement. Uh, that's a big shift, tectonic shift in the politics of Kerala because Indian Union Muslim League is genuinely feared that it is losing out on its vote base thanks to one party called the SDPI. Unfortunately, the which is still not been banned yet, and the thing is that the Congress, frankly, has no option and is staring down a barrel if it doesn't agree to it because Rahul Gandhi himself is uh, coming from Vayanad, which is a seat dominated by the Muslim League. No, no. So Vayanad was actually rumored as a seat that would go to the Indian Union Muslim League eventually, yes, but then they got. But I have another point also. Kerala is actually symptomatic of how how in a screwed up way Congress sees India. Right. Exactly. So they have an alliance with the Indian Union Muslim League, but that is not supposed to be communal. So then they do some sort of jugadu thing with Kerala Congress money in the Kottayam belt and try to get some Christian vote and then tell the Hindus, oh, we are with you because Ramesh Chenithala is the home minister. Right. So right. he's the Hindu leader. So ye weird si khichdi ya pizza, whatever, however you want to say, you know, whatever uh, uh, example you have to use that they have done with about six different toppings. And now they're saying, Ki, why does it look like shit? Because it is. You, you have actually, you have not addressed the real reasons for issues in, in Kerala. And Kerala has some genuine, has seen some violent political fights, but there are also some uh, things. If you talk to the, um, the, uh, the whole ISIS situation, where there are people from Kerala that were going to fight for ISIS, right? The strong Islamist influence there, which was faced, the backlash was within the Christian community who was scared, as well as the Hindu community. What have you done to uh, highlight that? Nothing. We have joined the Indian Union Muslim League. We will make sure that, uh, you know, what has Rahul Gandhi done to uh, uh, to address that? Has he has he said, has he made any statement like that in Vayanad that we're taking? In fact, the brother and sister keep saying about Palestine and stuff like that. That's also interesting. That interesting you bring up Palestine. Palestine, in fact, it was I think one of the sh most shameful moments that you've seen a diplomat actually uh, talking to locals and sort of bringing that up as a political issue in Kerala. That was done. I I don't remember who done it, but it, was, it happened. And the Palestinian ambassador 
was asked to give a speech in the local Kerala Muslim <laughs> congregation. Oh. Absolutely useless, and it was only meant to, you know, invoke uh, communal passions in the state. So <laughs> Ten years ago, Ashok Malik said this, and I'm coming to you, Kishore, in a second. That uh, the Congress party wants Rahul Gandhi to be Rajiv Gandhi, but he himself wants to be Justin Trudeau. <laughs> that seems to be a few years ago. So that seems still seems to be the case. And speaking of K.C. Venu Gopal, I think uh, Adit, he was the in charge for the Congress in Gujarat for 2022 elections, and we all know what the result was. Abhi to in Pura, Pura saap kar diya. Are in the state of Cong in the state of Gujarat, Congress poi. It's not even just <laughs> one leader. Congress poi poi, <laughs> including Arjun Modhwadia. He's also gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kishore, you were wanting to say something. Yeah, uh, but for all the all the achievements of Kesi Venugopal, he won Karnataka. So that was one thing you have to give credit for. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, the... hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I have to I have to interject here. That is saying that if um, um, uh, what Anand Kumar was appointed in charge of Gujarat with Amit Shah running the show, Anand Kumar won Gujarat for the BJP. But yeah. like you will also Karnataka was DK Shiv Kumar and, and that so KC Venugopal may have done that, but Karnataka was entirely DK Shiv Kumar, right? Huh. Like... No, if, if if that's the if that's the uh, take, then I think Congress uh, in Gujarat was already uh, knee deep in trouble, right? Bringing in yeah. KC Venugopal would not have honestly. Honestly, they should have done the alliance that they did for Ahmadmi Party right now. They should have done it in Gujarat in assembly polls. Ten, fifteen seats se zada fark nahi padta, but they would not have been humiliated the way they did. They would have at least ended mm -hmm. up with fifty, fifty-five seats like what they okay, did, okay. and uh, and stuff like that. So and the, they did not have a single face. So that's where KC, ha, KC Venugopal messed up. Okay, Anyways, ha, okay, sure. Okay. And then I'll uh, uh, with regard, I have yeah, with regards to con with regards to the Christian vote imploding in uh, Kerala uh, for the Congress. Uh, another another ex chief minister, uh, Uman Chandi, uh, he passed away, and her son, while uh, he was fighting uh, uh, cancer, uh, he was not getting any medical help in Kerala or any elsewhere. So I think he had to rush to Bangalore Hospital, Chennai Hospital, and all that had a, uh, a negative impact on the Christians. Uh, that was just one more cause. So I think that way you. You you see that the Christian would have totally uh, uh, eluded the Congress now, and I find it uh, difficult to believe that it will go back to the Congress anytime soon. Adit, interesting. Okay, now I have to move to Telangana, guys. Uh, 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 we have there is a lot to do, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more. But Telangana is the most interesting state because that is truly a trifecta. I mean, if there is a true mm. state where there is a three-way fight happening, it is Telangana. This was what Telangana was in 2019. The BJP, this is of course Secunderabad, and uh, the Green is Hyderabad. Uh, the, Hyderabad. You know, uh, as Javed Akhtar called him, Hyderabad ke ek mohalle ke leader, Asaduddin Owaisi, where he wins his Lok Sabha seat from. And <laughs> so he said this on the floor of a Rajya Sabha. Look yeah, at yeah, look yeah. at his uh, uh, and and, uh, and and he he's he said a wonderful thing that where Asaduddin Owaisi said that he doesn't say Vande Mataram because Constitution doesn't tell him to do so. So he said Constitution ta apko Sherwani pehne ka bhi hak nahi deta ta ap Sherwani kyu pehte ho, right? So that's the reality <laughs> of Asaduddin Owaisi. Uh, anyways, and then the north north Telangana portion where BJP won, where which was basically Adilabad, uh, Karimnagar, and Nizamabad. Uh, Nizamabad was the big one because Arvind Dharmapuri actually defeated K. Kavita. And here we come to the next uh, uh, 2024 phases of the BJP. And you can see that um, uh, Bandi Sanjay Kumar is fighting from Karim Nagar. That should be another close fight. Uh, Nizamabad, Arvind, uh, Dharmapuri, Arvind is doing. And K. Kavita obviously is facing her legal issues and so forth. And I don't think she's going to be fighting this election. Um, yeah, she's on MLC now. MLC. She's an MLC. Huh? I don't think Sikandrabad though, is going to be a safe seat for the BJP. One can assure if the BJP is on the rise. It's um, And then you have two other faces that may cause a lot of uh, sort of questions. Malkajgiri, one of the largest constituencies in India, over 30 lakh plus voters. Uh, yeah, that's how big it is uh, for people uh, uh, don't know if I think it is the largest. And DK Aruna in Mehboob Nagar. Those are the things. Now, India Alliance or INDI Alliance is facing another problem because Revan Reddy is in power and the Reddys are now asking for their share. They've only declared, I think, nine faces. 
and so right now the bjp seems to have got its act together in telangana uh, bandi sanjay kumar was sidelined during the assembly elections but he's back in action he's probably if bjp comes back he'll probably be made a minister again along with kishan reddy so um what do you guys think right i'll go to rohit first and then to mohal and then to kishore uh, rohit what do you think about the telangana faces i think one of the biggest mistakes that the bjp did in the assembly elections was to sit down sit out of it effectively because the vote was there for it to grab frankly mm. congress got the vote uh, brs should have not brs would have been wiped out had the bjp been seriously contesting that election but for whatever reasons it chose to sit out of the election in a way and you know let the brs have some kind of uh, face saving mm. of course i think the fact and some of the names that you mentioned you know itla rajender heavyweight candidate high chance of winning from malkaj giri of course arvind dharmapuri and bandi sanjay have been taking the fight to the brs for all this while now and since then the congress also is facing the heat uh, of you know uh, the bjp's inroads especially in northern and uh, central telangana the tribal belt where the bjp is pretty strong right now we saw that even in the assembly elections to, that is a big factor that is working for the bjp bjp will definitely gain from it the janjatiya outreach has been having an impact there i think one very interesting contest i want to see now is asaduddin ovesi fighting against madhavi lata madhavi lata is a fire brand leader and uh, she she has not held back any punches in attacking ovesi or the kind of politics he's been up to in hyderabad and uh, there is always been a significant section of votes that uh, bjp has been you know uh, looking for uh, in hyderabad because see it's not a Mus see people forget that hyderabad is not a muslim dominated city a seat it has got it is basically got pockets where the votes literally go for one party that's right so significant vote take vote for taking if the bjp wants to be a serious or any other party wants to be a serious candidate it's just symbolically that the congress has always been fielding a muslim candidate there's never been the need for a muslim candidate frankly in that so i think that's there right. are, that shows that there is a significant chance that the bjp fancies for itself in uh, hyderabad and also you know sort of give uh, azaduddin ovaisi a taste of his own medicine to an extent for a change yeah no let him campaign na let's see he wanted to be the united leader of muslims all across india because essentially that's what he was doing wherever yeah, muslim dominated yeah, areas basically that's the game that the bjp he had even started campaigning in gujarat and congress got so scared because the one vote bank there the koi wahan bhi wo attack karne chala gaya so so that was the thing so but having said that right brs i can say that now it is relegated to a definite number 3 party in the election i'm not saying it's out but brs is a definite number 3 in a national election so now brs that it's not in the government is it a straight congress versus bjp fight in telangana with advantage congress over here kishor and then what yeah i ah, no 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 go ahead rohit you can make a point at this i think that's becoming the case increasingly in telangana so the saffron uh, the saffron wave has breached the barrier for sure in the state i'll just look look that for now huh. Uh, with regard to Telangana, I think uh, TRS having a, a national ambition, becoming BRS, I think that was the that was the uh, shift. For a second, that, I heard that is BRS, and I was like, the way TRS is going, it will become BRS only. It's just BRS. It will become voluntary retirement scheme for them. <laughs> Possibly that's what happened. So yeah, I think I think uh, uh, TRS. I think they tried uh, stretching. Stretching too much, uh, far beyond their means, and uh, there was anyway anti-incumbency. Only the minister, only the minister, the MLA, and their party workers were uh, getting any benefit out of the out of the multiple schemes that they had uh, launched, especially the right to bandhu scheme. Uh, and therefore, I think it was imperative that uh, the challenger would win in the assembly election. Assembly election uh, happened just about five six months ago. now uh, point taken about uh, bandi sanjay being removed now uh, brought back uh, so bjp is now in a far better position not much uh, in fighting there in bjp now um, in terms of the seats i think you pointed out adilabad karim nagar uh, nizamabad two other seats where sitting trs brs mp have now joined uh, uh, bjp uh, sahirabad uh, right next to kanatka on the border with kanatka bb patel a lingayat mp Uh, he has shifted. He is now contesting as the BJP candidate. Then in Nagar Karnool, uh, the sitting BR, uh, BRS MP Putwanti Ramulu's son, he is now contesting from uh, BJP. 
Nagar Karnul may not be an outright victory for BJP. Hyderabad definitely looks like one extra win for BJP. So I think suddenly BJP is now looking at anything above five, uh, maybe even uh, getting closer and closer to ten. If not possible, at least uh, maybe around the eight mark out of a, a total of seventeen. So I think that is what uh, uh, we are we are looking at. And also in terms of uh, the seat share, uh, the vote share, if BJP w- does well now, I think it will be curtains for uh, TR, especially with all the legal troubles as well uh, going on for them. Absolutely, and we'll we'll talk more obviously as you know we get closer to that and uh, the, with the results coming in as well. But um, Mohal, any quick line to share? I know you did. You were like you wanted. Uh, to no, I think uh, everybody pretty much covered. I mean, I was just like one line stuck out to me that Kishore just said like ten. I mean, if ten is a, that's a political earthquake in Telangana, if BJP can get to ten. Well, I think what Kishore was trying to say is they are in contest in ten. I don't think. Ah, okay, okay, 10, okay. But they'll probably win about six or seven at least. Right. Yeah. yeah. Eight, Still eight, like eight. Yeah, eight in itself will be a huge achievement. But if mm-hmm. somehow uh, uh, BJP wins ten, all into place. I think. Oh, if if somehow BJP wins ten, then I think uh, uh, we are looking at a complete half the nation. Yeah. So I don't think they have ten sort of good candidates to win ten seats. But then if the pre- vote is for Mr. Modi, then who knows? I mean, for but that now, the BRS. I mean, BRS is not a national player. I mean, you know, they did change the name to do that, but. that has, there has to be a significant vote shift from the brs towards the bjp which yeah. given the assembly elections there could be possibly you know given tribute giving tribute to shri venkaiah and i do our ex vice president of india we, i will say one line trs tried to become brs but became vrs for kcr <laughs> <laughs> he would he would appreciate me for saying that no just to add to what mohel mohel is saying you know it's There are significant sections within the part within the state that were voting for waiting for the BJP to at least capitalize on their vote. I am not even kidding. That's how the situation was. Totally yes. With yeah. the fact that the BJP was not even bothered to reach out to them in the assembly election, so that is why they voted for the Congress. Basically, they like, "Yeah, to bother any kind of why will why we should have wasted time with them." Then. No, like, there was a vertical split in the BJP and the BRS vote. Plus, these stupid rumors that they were like, "Oh, BJP and BRS would do a post-poll alliance," and then exactly. we have the Twitter Sena saying that, "Oh, uh, KCR is not as bad as Congress." I'm like, "Why? Why? Why are you spreading these rumors? You don't need them." For all those who are talking about that, by the way, K Kavita is a co-accused in the Delhi Excise uh, Liquor Scam, be- under which one sitting chief minister for the first time ever is in a jail. In the jail. So K K and A K both are accused in that. So let's exactly. we'll see what happens. <laughs> so <laughs> please be sure. But here is the thing: we come to the last state of this uh, thing, and Mr. Modi's rumor as the grand unifier of India couldn't be more true in this state. he has managed to do what could not happen for years and years in the in the nt ramarao family united dagubatti purandeshwari and n chandrababu naidu to fight under one alliance in 2014 they were technically a part of the same alliance but purandeshwari seat they were going to lose everyone knew that but now chandrababu naidu has agreed to come back to the nda with pawan kalyan and purandeshwari who's the daughter of nt ramarao and chandrababu naidu of course being the son in law and uh, uh, there's always a dip- discussion between debate and bjp has been allotted six six seats to fight from uh, andhra pradesh that is five more than they had a chance in in andhra pradesh i think or maybe six more than they had a chance in by themselves so whoever has done the bargaining in andhra pradesh for bjp kudos to them uh, narasapuram is a seat that they had won previously rajamundri is another one araku is another one and the other two are tirup tirupati rajampet rajampet is the, uh, i think uh, the, the purandeshwari's old seat which uh, or not rajampet i think she she actually stood on that seat if i'm not mistaken in uh, 2014 yes she did and she got four and a half lakh votes so maybe they are thinking of getting uh, uh, purandeshwari there but let me go to kishor first and then to mohal and rohit kishor do you even think there is a, a i mean this is the only fighting chance they had to take on uh, the fan because that's the symbol of ysrcp if people don't know the pankha and yeah. they B- won 23 out of 25 last time true true bjp has absolutely no chance in uh, andhra pradesh if it wants to fight alone uh, make no mistake remember that uh, andhra is also voting for a legislative assembly together this time around uh, last time around 
uh, Jagan had won based on a massive anti-incumbent say against uh, Jag- uh, against uh, Chandra Babu Naidu. And this time around, the anti-incumbent say against Jagan is not that much. And therefore, uh, Chandra Babu Naidu knew that he, if he had to get power back in the state, he had to cobble up alliances. Uh, so he, he was on he was in one corner. The, in the other in the other uh, political vacuum, there was Janasena by Pawan Kalyan, who was who was uh, close to BJP. So uh, there was talk of uh, a three-way fight: Janasena and BJP as one, uh, TDP as another, via HCP as another. And obviously, with the uh, with the opposition vote splitting, uh, it would be victory for Jagan again. So uh, it was primarily Pawan Kalyan who. Uh, who was responsible for this kind of a three-party alliance. And therefore, I think uh, BJP, uh, despite initially having claimed that there is, the doors have been closed for uh, Chandra Bapu Naidu, uh, the NDA doors have been closed, uh, this time around, they, they just sat it out for a while. They wanted TDP to come and make offer after offer after offer. And therefore, I think now BJP said, okay, we don't worry much about the split in the uh, assembly as to how many seats you will give us to fight. But for the Lok Sabha, we want uh, uh, the bigger number. And that is why you have uh, the number uh, six now out of 25. And uh, now, if you also see the uh, constituencies where BJP is fighting, BJP now also wants to capture the large uh, population centers, the cultural centers. Rajamandri, Vishakapatnam, Vijayawada, Tirupati, all these are the culturally happening places. So I think BJP wants to somehow uh, get into the, uh, the mind space of the Adra people by getting into these culturally important places. Now, uh, I, I don't think they've got Vijayawada and Vishakapatnam, but definitely Rajamandri, Araku, uh, Tirupati. So uh, this way, I think BJP will uh, be able to get one or two. Uh, out of the six, and that in itself is a good uh, victory for BJP, uh, staring at uh, a, a position where they were not able to win anything. Now, with regards to the uh, assembly, I really doubt if the alliance can uh, dethrone Jagan. Uh, uh, Jagan had last time won a massive mandate. I think it was around 130, 140 out of 175 uh, seats. This time around, the number may come down, but I, I do see Jagan scraping through and somehow uh, managing to form the government again. So I think uh, in the state, uh, the people may vote differently for the assembly and for the Lok Sabha. Yeah. Last time it was a very, very balanced <laughs> election. This is off the map of on the Pradesh Lok Jagan won 21, everything except for two seats. Uh, yeah, this so, was, uh, yeah, this was after, uh, sorry, this was after the, uh, the, the the rejection of the demand for special status huh. um, uh, where uh, tdp had walked out of the nda and had uh, famously abused uh, modi and uh, even this time around i need to point this out uh, chandra babu naidu is not abusing modi anymore however if you look at the telugu media the andhra media the the spokespersons of tdp they continue to badmouth bjp as much as they want and there is nobody to check that uh, menace. Andhra politics is, is, uh, is known for uh, using uh, abusive words, abusive language. So I think that way the, the level of discourse is not great to speak about. But uh, uh, again, coming back to the uh, Sikhs, uh, YSRCP may not be able to replicate their victory last time around, but definitely will still be the numero uno party there. Are it? Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Mohal, you next and then Rohit on this. Uh, or you want to go the last, Mohal. I can go to Rohit then um, uh, first. Okay, Rohit, uh, uh, you go first on this. I um, was waiting for one Bharat Ratna to be declared for N.T. Rama Rao anytime soon. No, <laughs> it has not happened yet. Given how they were literally giving Bharat Ratna out by the dozen to income before they inducted uh, allies. Uh, jokes apart, I think the biggest problem is that the BJP is yet again giving TDP the lifeline it does not deserve. Mm. Uh, the, as I see it, the TDP is a party now, frankly, that is sitting already on the margins of the Tamil of the uh, Andhra Pradesh politics. 
See, they are also that, on the margins of Tamil Nadu, right at the border. <laughs> Tamil Nadu, they played the contest in the border seats, apparently, or something like that. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that aside, one of the uh, the factors that the BJP is in alliance with the TDP and the Janasena, mind you, that shows yeah. how weak all these parties are against the YSRCP right now in the state. Correct. Right. YSRCP, despite having done, frankly, nothing for the state for the last five years either, is still the more popular choice compared to this alliance, it's becoming increasingly evident. Um, <clears throat> despite the, you know, uh, fiasco of three capital cities <laughs> and God knows what all going on in the state, I mean, they're not able to defeat the alliance. And people have to realize why the YSRCP, frankly, gets the votes that it does. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, BJP, by the way, contesting from Tirupati can be quite a symbolic gesture as well because the allegations of trying to have... Uh, you know, conversion uh, mafia going big in that region. Uh, if, the, if the BJP even comes in with a fighting chance, if the BJP, I'm saying, that would be a big, uh, you know, uh, you know, symbol of the sentiment of the people against the conversion mafia that is running amok in the state right now. People uh, tend to underestimate the impact of the conversion mafia within the state. Um, economically, though, there's frankly nothing that... Uh, and see, one of the biggest problems that I see generally with Indian politics, which is also symptomatic of what Andhra politics is becoming, this special status demand is frankly ludicrous. Okay. As I said, you will have to give special status to states that have the highest amount of debt, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Punjab would have to go in, Bengal would have to go in, Kerala would have to go in, Bihar has been asking for special status for like donkey's years now. Specifically, just mm -hmm. within the states, not even the people, mind you. They ask for special no. status even before they ask for Bharat Ratna for Karpuri Thakur. Yeah, exactly. So, no, uh, forget forget pol for, forget political parties asking for special status. Now you have the Supreme Court telling uh, the central government, why don't you give a one-time special package to Kerala just to help it out financially? So uh, that's the that's the uh, love and romance and attachment for uh, special special you have in our country. Oh, wow. But and not just that, you look at the way generally, I mean, the freebie politics that Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh have specialized in, frankly. With, which also has a huge amount of corruption behind it, usually. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, the the cocktail within uh, Andhra Pradesh is such that I, frankly, even from a Lok Sabha perspective, see it very difficult for the alliance right now. Uh, not just the assembly elections. I mean, fighting chance, yes. I think because of the alliance, there is some fighting chance. And one thing has to be noted, huh? mind, mind you, Pawan Kalyan, unlike his brother Chiranjeevi, emerging as a serious political contender. Mind you, the Congress is nowhere in the state. I think most people are ignoring that. Congress is nowhere to be seen in the state right now. Absolutely. They're they're the state. They've given they're up on the scenes that they've mm -hmm. given up on Andhra Pradesh totally. No, no, they have. They have totally given it up, given up on it. And I don't even know what they are trying to do, basically. And interesting is, this is exactly what we said for Chiranjeevi 15 years ago. Uh, he contested from Tiruvati, Tirupati, split the Congress vote, make sure, ensure the Congress, no, split the TDP vote. Congress came to power, comes to power in 2009 and then Chiranjeevi becomes the tourism minister of India. Sorry, Dr. Chiranjeevi becomes the tourism minister of India. So, uh, and now I think he's also been given an award, uh, Padma Bhushan or something, I forget in the last... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, because basically... One very influential. No, class. no, no. They, this is to, this is to tell him that you stay in Delhi. Do not come to Andhra again. Let your brother now run the show. We yeah, are in yeah. alliance with him. And that's also the caste alliance, mind you, by the way, that the TDP is now trying with the BJP in the fold. So TDP is seen mostly as a Kamma party, right? Now you have uh, apparently one Kapu alliance because uh, Janasena Pavan Kalyan is basically in that community. Then you're thinking of BJP bringing in the marginal, the Brahmin, Raju and those kind of votes. Hmm. So somehow it is being seen as one block of, the, of one dominant caste and other groupings. To contest the YSRCP's uh, vote base, which is basically the Reddies and other communities. Achha, other one, one thing I will say, there is only one candidate that uh, uh, Congress has declared. Uh, that is in Kadappa, Vaya Sharmila, the, the sister of Jagan Mohan Reddy. She is fighting on a Congress seat uh, I, in Kadappa. Because... I, by the way, uh, apna Chandra Babu Naidu's base. No, 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 no. That is no, YSR, no, no, no. YSR's base. That was yeah. he was known as the Lion of Kadappa. That, Kada, that, that, uh, that. Chandra Baba Naidu is not Kadappa. It, uh, it is uh, uh, Kuppam. Kuppam, Kuppam, Kuppam is uh, Kadappa is Kadappa is Vaisal. 
So, um, and if you want to know people, the complexities of Andhra politics, please watch Rakta Charitra, both the parts by Ram Gopal Verma. Uh, there are a lot of subtle references to... I mean, you can, no, you can as well go and stand in front of a mutton, mutton shop, right? Mutton shop. Rather than, watch, rather than watching Rakta Charitra 1 and 2. Exactly, exactly. But so politics, does, it's like, politics in Andhra is bloody. People somehow just don't get it. It's generally don't don't get it. really crude. I mean, that you are talking about uh, the BJP being abused. You should see the kind of things they say about each other on te television. If you understood Telugu, you would go mad. <laughs> on the floor, on the assembly floor, Vyas Raj Shekhar Reddy, as chief minister, threatened to kill Chandrababu Naidu in as many words. Wow. As I totally forgot. Wow. So, uh, Mohan, do you have any like any quick points on Andhra Pradesh or something? I know yeah, I think questions. see, like it's a marriage of convenience. Like TDP is staring at like possible like fifteen years in the wilderness if they don't win the election at the local level. Which I mean, you guys are alluding to like that. Uh, YSR CP might like win one more time, uh, and also BJP is nowhere to be seen, right? So I mean, also uh, mind you, like Chandra Babu Naidu, I mean. All the politicians, especially the non-BJP, keep talking about ED and CBI cases against them. But also remember, like Chandra Babu Naidu has been hounded even by the local government on a lot of uh, corruption cases against him. So for him, it's also a matter of political survival and not going to jail. So he uh, is like, uh, I mean, even though like he has abused Prime Minister Modi quite vigorously in the past. I mean, as they say in politics, all is forgiven and like there are no permanent enemies so they have again resurrected this alliance like what it comes to is yet to be seen i mean the long-term goal for bjp is like since they can't grow organically i mean since chandra Naidu, I, I don't know if there is any uh anointed uh like uh, what you call successor like so they i mean you never know like five or ten years down the road like they, they might want to do with like a nitish or a uh, Naveen Babu in Odi neighboring Odisha, they might want to uh, co op the TDP into their fold. In a, I mean, that's like it's just a rumor, I mean, long term. So, I mean, they don't want to, in, they don't want to draw, draw a blank or a zero in the such an important state. So, they just have this marriage of uh, convenience for now. I mean, whatever they gain is going to be a plus compared to the last election. Adit. Fascinating, fascinating. No, we. we Session huh. part, uh, Chandra Babu Naidu has been trying to push his son Naralokesh for a while now. Frankly, he doesn't even fly a kite. Uh, there was a lot of comparison of him and uh, 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 KTR, KT Ramarao, uh, KCR's son. And apparently, within the Telugu circles, it's KTR who gets more, uh, who is more popular in both the states, and is seen as a more of a go-getter, unlike Lokesh. So I mean, it's not the kite has not flown well for this candidate for this case. Interesting, very interesting. So I mean, I'll have to wrap it up there. I mean, it's we, we, we've gone way over what we decided, but thank you all for joining in. Any quick closing thoughts? Thirty seconds before we wrap it up, guys. Uh, difficult for uh, BJP in Andhra simply because they have not been able to win over any particular community, and uh, therefore uh, they will have to piggyback on anyone, either Vyasar or uh, Telugu Desham. And until that happens, uh, this will be a marriage of convenience, like how Mohal pointed out. Uh, Congress, entire Congress vote has shifted to YSR. And that, that is the reason why you don't have uh, any any uh, significant showing for the party there. Uh, YS Samila is not in speaking terms with uh, YS Jagan. Uh, she had fought in uh, Telangana politically last time around. Uh, she, got a, she drew a blank slate. And now uh, with all the... Uh, with all the uh, negative achievements, she has now shifted her focus to uh, Andhra from Telangana and now has been made the Congress uh, party head there and she's fighting from Kadapa. Obviously, she'll not win. Obviously, Congress will again draw a blank uh, slate. But uh, it is important to see uh, how well the ready Christian vote continues to be with uh, the Vyasar CP. And if that is one barometer to look at, I think uh, that will that will define uh, that will continue to define Andhra politics for a little longer. Are they? On a lighter note, on a lighter note, in Andhra politics, there is no one on talking terms. Everyone is on shooting terms. So we. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but I think we can conclude that uh, probably the BJP is set to repeat its 2020-2019 tally, if not increase it, owing to the gains in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. It might even go up a little bit further. We may not see it go to 27 out of 28 in uh, Karnataka, but it's possible. Rohit, you had something to add? Just a closing remark on my end. I want the BJP to win big in the South only for only and only for one reason these days. And that is this whole nonsense that is talking about, you know, United States or South India and all that bullshit that has been mm. going on. The BJP's win will defeat that pathetic, dangerous narrative and will send a strong message that people really need to, you know, at least these political parties really need to stop talking this rubbish. Now. No, no, I agree. And if that... And then... Uh, please. On, on a lighter note, I think we forgot, like, I mean, that reminds me of the famous recent quote, like, Jab bhi dekhta hu ship mujhe yaad aata hai Lakshwadeep, you know. So, you know, <laughs> we didn't talk about Lakshwadeep. So, interestingly, like, uh, BJP has thrown its support behind, I mean, usually NCP wins the seat. So, the Ajit Pawar faction, they have thrown their support. So, I just want to make sure that since we're talking about the South, we don't forget about tiny Lakshwadeep. So, BJP is supporting NCP, Ajit Pawar faction over there. Ah. Or as and and, BJ, uh, and uh, sorry, and BJP is supposed to win uh, Puducherry as well. Uh, uh, status quo there, BJP and uh, NR Congress and Ramaswamy Congress, they are the alliance partners and uh, it should repeat its uh, victory Absolutely. there. To, to quote Karthi uh, uh, Chidambaram, the South. So I hope Karthi Chidambaram also loses his seat in Shivaganga because that's what the South is what he said when they were winning in Telangana. So hopefully people like them get a reality check. But I'll, I'll have to end here, guys. We'll be back next week with part three of our podcast. And then uske baad, uh, part four and next week, we'll also cover all the seats that are going in the, uh, um, uh, not just the east of India, but also the, f- the first two phases. We'll just do a quick wrap up and tell you which party is in the front. Um, with that, uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, this has been great fun. Mohal, Kishore, Rohit, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll be back next week, guys. Keep stay tuned. Please follow them on Twitter. Like, share, subscribe, share the love. Please hit like on this video. You know the drill. I don't need to repeat. But thank you everyone for all your support for Mindmakers and our efforts. Thank you.